Good morning. Welcome to 50 Question Friday for July 17th. All right. So good to see everybody here this morning. Um, so I'll go ahead and start off as usual with some of the emails that we have here for 50 Question Friday. And please bear with me while I find them. We're having problems with our emails here, so I'm just getting them all right now. Haven't had a chance to go through them. All right, so I hope everybody is well. Won't be doing a fifth question Friday next week. Um, actually, next Friday I'll be in Michigan with Mary Hardy doing the, the event there with the Knight Templars and Marys. Um, okay, so our first question here is from Anonymous. Um, and Anonymous would like to know, what would be the effects of throwing a practitioner ring into a large body of water, like a rake, lake or a river, that is being used for recreation, dumping, drinking water? Um, so basically, if you throw a you know, any of the tensor tools into a body of water, it is going to start to raise that frequency and vibration of all the water. It's going to be doing that clearing work. Um, you know, instead of throwing a, you know, a giant $200 practitioner ring into the water, there's some other things that you can do. One of them, if you want to use a physical tool, is to use one of the grid points. Um, you'd actually throw like three or four grid points into a large body of water on either sides of it. Um, I'm actually going to do that out at Lake Michigan when I go out um, or somewhere in the Great Lakes anyway. And then um, basically these guys are just like a they're like a plastic in the water in that they take hundreds of years to dissolve. Um, you know it, it is a plant-based resin. I would feel better about throwing this in the water than you know, a plastic spoon. Um, it's just, it's, it's a different style of, of material, even though it is still a plastic. Um, but that is one of the alternatives to throw on a giant $200 practitioner ring into a lake to charge it would be one of the pyramids or better yet three or four and create the grid. The other thing, which is what we've been teaching, um, you know, across the globe is the light anchoring. Um, using anchors of light for water um, because really these the, the tools they're they're creating these are light anchors they are light they are anchoring in they are carrying a column of light we can recreate this through consciousness um, you know the golden fire and light wand is one of them the wings of talk is one of them that are tools that we can use to create these columns of light um, you know, and they're great training wheels for us. All right, so another question from the internet. The internet, it sounds so 90s. All right, so somebody had a question on 5G jewelry. So basically this person is, uh, Kate is just asking about um, states that she's loving the water from the water pitcher um just curious about the golden fire coil pendant if that is protecting from 5g um, and then also asking what other jewelry is good for 5g if you don't want to wear a necklace um, so basically any of the tensor tools that we create are going to be working with all electromagnetics um, the the 5g millimeter wave because 5G is, it's like everything right now, there's not enough information out there for people. Um, real information. There's an overload of other information. But for like the 5G millimeter wave, it, only the golden fire is able to clear that millimeter wave, either that are columns of light that we know of. I'm sure there's other great things out there. As far as all electromagnetics, including your basic 5G cell phone towers, which is just a fifth generation, it's it's just a, a 
a different frequency than the 4G. Um, yeah, any of the tensor tools will be working with that. As far as, again, the 5G millimeter wave, which I'm considering doing a study in Chicago again on my way home, because um, last year I went out to Chicago um, during the Knights Templars out there in Michigan. And I stopped in Chicago and did some filming, some studies on their 5G. And I was always going to, I intended to do the video 5G and the frequencies of funk just to kind to just kind of um, put people at ease with a lot of the fears with 5G and the millimeter wave and its limited abilities, um, its limited capacity to really be anywhere. I mean, 5G millimeter wave is, um, it's not going to work. And it definitely doesn't work anywhere else besides downtown inner cities if you were standing right in the line of the 5G millimeter wave. So anyway, back to the question. Any of the Golden Fire tools will work with 5G. Um, and then Kate goes on to ask about the Golden Fire generator, the, the radius effect, things like that. Um, so basically, again, with any of the Golden Fire generators, they produce a field that goes out nearly two miles across. It goes out about seven eighths, almost a mile now. Actually, it feels like it is going just a little over a mile right now is what it looks like to me, um, the, the field on these generators. So it's about a two mile sphere of influence. Um, so that's to answer the question for Kate, that is the golden fire generator. In, of the re in terms of the regeneration ring, how long do you put things in it for it to be affected? Um, that's a good question. So one of the regeneration rings, water, water is affected immediately. Crystals are affected immediately or people are affected immediately. Um, basically with any of the tensor fields, if you're working with things like water, you know, to re physically restructure water, it's, it's about a four to six hour time within the field. Um, so then the, the question about putting things in the regeneration ring and how long till it affects them, um, it'll affect everything energetically right away, but it takes longer to do any of the deeper physical restructuring for electrom or for water. Um, so it just depends on what you're working on, on how fast the effects occur with that. All right. So just checking out chat hey everybody um and then two please be sure to drop your questions under the question tab when you have because i'm not going to run through all the chat today uh john i have your question here about the cosmic sun disc so i'll be able to get to that one but yeah please do drop questions in the question tabs and um and we will get to them so let's see, this was the question from Kate. All right, we have some other questions here. Okay, so this is something that I will just um, talk to this person directly. Another question. So, um, this question from Martin. Uh, Martin states that he lives in Australia, so it's around 1.30 a.m. in Australia. So um, if you guys think of a different time that would be more beneficial, we'll certainly consider that. Um, we've just been sticking with the 9.30 because um, I know it works for the majority of, of folks out there. But if anybody has any um, different suggestions, like if they can't make the webinars because of a certain time, please do let us know and we'll certainly consider moving some times around. Um, so this is a long email, so we won't go there. I'll answer this question again, mono e mono. Okay, so this question from Lucas. Um, one question. So the question is about doing the release work, such as emotions, programs, etc., and doing that deep releasing work. If you can do that with a golden fire ring, or if you need the regeneration 
or the golden fire and regeneration in a combination. Um, and then also asking what's the easiest way for doing the releasing work from the tools. The question was the ascension pyramid. Um, so for, for doing the release work, the tools again are nice for that to hold the space, to hold the field, to help to bring the stuff up. You know, the golden fire is going to start to bring things to the surface, bring things to light awareness. Um, and that's, you know, the golden fire will do that. Now the regeneration rings, um, will do that too, but for doing the release work, really using all three of them, the harmonic creation field trio, which is in the gateway pendant and the gateway tab, um, you know, the harmonic creation field trio that has the golden fire and the regeneration are rings that I would suggest for using this field to do release work. Now, again, if you go to the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, I believe it is, on one of the webinars, the product webinars we did, and I'm pretty sure it's the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, we did a, a meditation to where you could be in this field and to do that release work. Now, you don't need to own the physical tools to bring in that field and to do that work with. So you can work with these without actually purchasing the rings. And if you go to, um, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, it'll walk you through being in that space and doing that release. Now, truly, those spaces that the tools hold are great for doing the work, but we can do that work on our own. Um, and then like Lucas was asking for doing the release work, the most powerful tool, yeah, probably one of the the pyramids, the ascension pyramid that you can actually stand up in and do the work within that pyramid. Because really that field of neutrality is the most phenomenal thing for doing the release work um, is the field of neutrality. Harmonic creation field trio is pretty phenomenal, but um, what's going on the hard space, you guys? It's been quite a week. To me, this week, the past few days, I have felt the shifts huge. Um, I feel like there is something, you know, there's definitely something happening out there. And, you know, a lot of people talk about the, um, the different timeline shifts and things and the Mayan calendar and how July 26th, that day out of time, is, you know, actually a huge pivotal day for all of us that it's um possibly the calculations were wrong and maybe the end of the mind calendar is in 2020 and not 2012 but who knows it's just just another thing for us to have our attention on to um but no matter what yeah i felt some really great shifts here this week so i'm starting to feel more like um a multi-dimensional human again instead of just uh, human. All right, so let's go in the heart space real quick. Putting your attention onto your physical heart, connecting your light within your heart to the light of the earth, to that heart of the earth. And breathing in that unconditional loving energy of the earth into your physical heart. And next, connecting the light of Gaia and of your heart to the light of source, soul, creation, God. Breathing in that energy of creation into the heart. And taking that third breath, breathing in both earth and sky, bringing that together, sending those lights both back out so that you are a column of light that is grounded, connected. And that column of light consists of creation, the energy of the earth, and you. That is the Trinity. All right, so 
One of the questions from John, does the cosmic sun disk structure water? It certainly does. Excuse the shrink wrap here. Um, yes, the cosmic sun disk will totally restructure water. Um, the choruses are pretty phenomenal at doing the physical work. Um, so any tensor fields will restructure water, but the way that the torus flows within that cosmic sun disk or in the golden fire torus, um, the way that toroidal field flows, it puts that spin to the water faster. Um, so to me, I think you could restructure water on there a lot quicker than four to six hours. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the questions tab. Can you comment on how crop circles are being created? I cannot. That's something that um, we haven't really looked too deep into. Um, I do know that there's a lot of crop circles out there that I do resonate with and that I, I feel a lot, but have never really looked into it. As a matter of fact, the design for the Taurus was also a crop circle design. That's kind of how we got inspired to create the Taurus in the first place was through that crop circle in 2009. Um, question, what would be the effects of throwing a practitioner ring into a large body of water? Oh, okay, sorry. We we had just uh, answered that question because it was on both chat and the other of, of throwing the ring into, into the water. Um, which tool is best for acute injuring? So, I'm guessing that the question here, which tool is best for acute injuring, um, working with pinpoint areas, I'm, I'm assuming, see none, that your question is about working with specific pinpoint areas um, and what tool is best for that. Now, of course, the golden fire and light wand is a great one to pinpoint energy into one little spot um, as is using just a simple ring, a small ring over the spot. And then you can add in a wand or you can add in the shaman's wand or the dragon wand or the fairy wand. Um, depending on what the energetics is around it, um, some wands work better for some things than others. I mean, I've seen dragon wands clear up like neck injuries like instantly, but yet other things you can sit there and work for months and um, hardly have a shift. And that's that, you know, that just goes back to the energetic in the, in the soul. Um, so as far as working with very specific injuries, illnesses, for me, I'll usually use a wand or run energy myself um put a ring around it wear your jewelry close to that area um you know the like slim's accuvac was one that was very pinpointed for for energy work um and the accuvac does work really well i mean there's basically any of the fields that you can put that injury within the field and then do the consciousness work along with it, it's going to amplify everything. Um, how long do you recommend typically working with one frequency for the most beneficial results? So as far as working with any specific ring or frequency, um, that's, man, you know, that's really hard to say. Again, it is very individual specific on how long you would work with a specific frequency, like the golden fire ring. Um, you know, for for me, as we have created tools and created new frequencies along the way, usually I would always work with those new frequencies. Um, and so for, for my experience, it's always been, I'll work with one frequency until the next one comes along. Um, I would say that you can skip all the other frequencies all the way up to the golden fire and then go straight to the golden fire. Uh, so just for just about everybody, I would suggest using the golden fire to begin working with. And um, from there, you know, basically, even though we don't always feel 
the energetics or the effects of the tools, they are always working on us. They are always working on creating those subtle changes within the DNA, within our entire structure. So even though we don't feel like this golden fire ring is doing for us any, anything for us anymore because we've had it for a year, um, it is still doing the work. But yet using the regeneration, the golden fire, you know, the harmonic creation field trio, again, the regeneration golden fire, phenomenal together, using the trio together is another fantastic way. Um, but definitely the golden fire and the regeneration together are something that to me, those two, you can work with them for a lifetime and still be receiving beneficial, um, energetics from it. Let's see. Linda asks, what are the effects of the Triskelion finger ring? So the Hedica ring, um, and the Hedicas in general, the Hedica Triskelion. So the Hedica rings that we make, basically when you wear a Hedica ring, it's gonna raise the frequency and vibration of the water in the body and to help to balance pH, just like it does with water because it is balancing the pH of the water. Now, so the, the Hedica finger rings, for me, when I first put one on, um, I'm really sensitive to that energy. So it felt like I had a big ball of energy on my hand. I couldn't shake it off. I couldn't move it. So, um, you know, I just switch hands until I become more accustomed to it. And actually the first time I wore a Hedica ring, I felt this tingling, um, all the way up my arm. And it was kind of disconcerting at the time because I just started to feel energy. And so, um, you know, and then that's one of the things that we put on the website too with the Hedica ring is that if you feel a uh, tingling or discomfort in one arm that you're wearing the hand, the hand that you're wearing the ring on, switch it over um, just until your body gets to be accustomed to it because it's raising the frequency and vibration of the water in the body. And that's basically all the Triskelion is going to do. Um, a well, a lot of people use the Triskelion for doing healing work, of course. But I mean, the Triskelion's not going to be, the Hedica is not going to be doing the EMF clearing, um, helping us dump the junk, all that fun stuff, even though it is still raising us in frequency and vibration. Uh, let's see. And then Sinan, do you think, do you think to add some new activations or features into the third templates of all the tools in the future? Um, so basically, we as we grow we do add things into the etheric templates we haven't added anything into the etheric templates i don't think since march which has really been a long time um usually when i'm twisting wire and i'm making a specific ring like let's say the dragon wand and i'm twisting the dragon wand if I am guided to at the time, I will make adjustments to, I will intend that our adjustments are made to the etheric templates for something that, that I see and feel. And then those adjustments either are taken completely or only part of it or not at all um, between my higher self and Heimdall, who is the guardian of the templates um, and it's kind of like a larger council because Brenda is also involved with that her higher self so if our higher selves feel that it is beneficial to add that to the etheric templates then it does and so it could be that perhaps we are making adjustments to specific tools etheric templates you know on a weekly basis and we don't always necessarily share all that information of making these little adjustments. I don't usually make the announcements. I think it was March or April that I made that announcement about um, the, the adjustments that we did to the etheric templates for all the tools all together um, that they all shifted. Um, and so Basically, seen on yeah, we're we're always adjusting the templates as need be, and I really feel here that you guys, as soon as we get back into the fast flowing rivers again, that there's going to be some major adjustments coming for sure. Um, let's see, Johan asks, 
what would be a good complement to the torus pendant? I have the regeneration generator, love that size. Can you please make a silver regeneration Gaia sphere in the same size? Um, yeah, so that silver regeneration, well, so the regeneration tensor field generator, and I'll have one sitting here, um, it is the same size around as the torus pendant. Uh, my chain broke this morning. Um, so something to add to the torus pendant. You know, for a while, I actually added an infinity. And my infinity, I simply put onto the lanyard. And I used a silver infinity. So that the infinity rode basically on the lanyard right above the torus. Um, and that feels pretty good. But for me, I just, I like the torus basically on its own, um, the torus pendant. So what would complement the torus pendant? Just about any of the tools. Um, you know, there's still some days that I'll wear, wear a coil pendant um, or the the key, uh, the untak, the key. And so those are a couple of them that I'll wear with my torus pendant. But basically, it, it's very much an, an individual um, thing there on what, you need for the day and that's usually me too is i'll check every day what it is that i should put on and wear um and it's course the torus pendant and the bracelets let's see and yeah we're certainly considering making um gaia spheres in silver out of the regeneration ring with some various sizes um uh, it's not going to be here for a little while so let's see, and then Johan goes on. I also have the Golden Fire Gaia Sphere with a quantum grid point placed in it. Creates a space similar to that of the three or five grid points, question mark. Have you thought about producing Hecka class brings finger sizes? Um, so as far as putting the Gaia Sphere or putting the quantum grid point into the Gaia Sphere, and the question was if that creates a similar space similar to using more grid points. No, basically, when you're using a grid point, it is creating that pyramid structure, giant pyramid structure around your space. When you start adding in more grid points, it is simply, it's not, it is simply extending the field, not necessarily the giant etheric pyramid, but the field that these create, that quantum heart, um, that ascension field. These guys are basically when you set up three of them or more, because in a three dimensional space, you need three points to um, create a three dimensional space. Well, that's actually a two dimensional space. So anyway, you need three points in order to, to extend that space out. So the idea of using multiple grid points is to simply create a larger space. But using a single grid point, um, you're not going to be able to amplify it out or use the generator or Gaia sphere as a carrier wave to take that energy out. They're still going to be two separate energies, even though they'll still harmonize and synergize with each other. They're still going to be two separate energies. Um, all right, and have you thought about producing the heck class rings finger size? Yeah, actually, we were producing. That's one of the things that we started. Um, that heck class design. We we were started to make some some adjustable style finger rings, and we were playing with those as a possibility to create. Um, the finger rings one has been kind of an elusive thing. We've been intending to do that one for years to make sized finger rings. It's just that. It takes so much time and energy um, for us to create all these full and half size finger rings and have all these different size finger rings because we have to figure out the formulas of the gauge of wire, the tightness of twist, um, and then finding the exact cubit measures that we can use to create size finger rings. It's it's kind of a it's it's a big endeavor. We did start it a couple of times. Um, and I would love to be able to get finger rings out there. And so there are so many of those projects that we have on the back burners that we're just not able to get to, um, until we are able to stay ahead 
in our production, which we're working very hard on. Um, we've been having consistent growing pains for years and we're almost to the point, I feel, where we can get everything lined up to stay ahead of, you know, the tidal wave. Someday is the answer to that question. We will have finger rings. Uh, Robert, have any of the tools been used in agriculture plants, either removing pest disease or increasing yields? Uh, yes, Robert. Actually, we recommend the the seven inch golden or the seven inch Harmony generator. The seven inch Harmony generator for commercial agriculture is a phenomenal tool, and yes, it is used a lot in commercial agriculture. Um, because it has that 12 mile sphere of influence, it's working with the water, it's working with um, the consciousness of the plants, it's working with all the divas and the elementals of the land, um, and then it takes your input and your intention and it works with everybody. Um, so as far as using the, the generators to work with pest diseases, um, yes, actually one of the first generators, well, one of the first two or three foot generators that I made, we used with a plant that had blight and it cleared the blight, which is a DNA issue within the plants. So it cleared the blight in a plant um, by putting this giant tensor field generator over it. And that was, gosh, eight, nine years ago. Um, but then we've also worked with um, some friends of ours who did some studies in New Zealand and they took, we made, specific 333 megahertz generators um, to repel beetles out of a field. And so we create a push-pull. So when we're using the tensor tools to like, let's say, move pests out of a field, we don't come in and just be like forcing, hey, let's get out of here. No, we have to go and we create the safe zones for them. We create the attraction points, the safe space for those beetles and then we drop into the field that repulsing effect. So that way they have somewhere to go and it creates a, harmon a harm harmonious situation for everybody. Um, and yeah, we've, we've seen some good results with that. And then Sinan, can I salt you about a cubit length I found? Yeah, no, you're more than welcome to email me, Sinan, um, twisted sage at hotmail. And I'd be happy to chat with you. Well, let's see. Then, Robert, can you talk about how sound affects personal healing? Does it connect with etheric auras at all? Are singing bowls the best for this or anything else? So, as far as how sound affects personal healing, you know, my sister Brenda, she, when she does in person, she always uses her singing bowl. She has a giant crystal singing bowl that has consciousness associated with it. It in itself is, is a phenomenal healer. Um, and so using sound with healing, and I'm, I, I only have my experience with that, which is basically with Brenda, I have singing bowls. Um, my mom does tuning forks. So basically when you use sound, um, to me how I see it is sound is affecting us more in the physical because the sound waves are more of a physical, they, they, they affect the physical. And um, so using sound waves in and incorporating in the consciousness work, incorporating in the tensor fields, um, you know, like with our singing bowls, we always use rings with our singing bowls. Um, I know a lot of people who use um, tuning forks and they'll take like a ring and they'll place that onto the body. And then when you use the tuning fork, it will basically, you know, you can put the base of that tuning fork like let's say that's a tuning fork and I've struck it, you put the base of that onto the physical and then you're using the ring as well as the vibration, um, you know, with that. So I'm kind of limited on being able to give you much information on healing with sound. I know it is, it's something that I've experienced and that we do, but I don't know details. Um, Sinan, is it possible you can talk about the effects of these tools on blood? Uh, that's a good question. I know we've looked at that before. Um, 
and I do not remember what it was that we were seeing because uh, we did do some some work and some research on on blood. Um, and I'm trying to remember what that was. And I think I've seen some other people do research on that too, but I just cannot remember, um, about working with blood. So let's see, question, Samson, hey there. I have a question about the HECA clasp. What kind of effect does the copper and the silver have on the physical? Well, that's a good question. So the copper, of course, it's something that, you know, our body will absorb as much copper as it can use because we, we need copper um, in, in our bodies. And so having copper in the HECA clasp is a phenomenal thing because you get your dose of copper. Um, silver, good question. I have no idea what it is about the physical properties of silver as far as the absorption, the sloughing off of anything, because silver really doesn't, you know, it's that patina that comes out of the copper that we're absorbing, you know, the, that copper molecule. But the silver, I'm really not sure what it is or if we even absorb anything from the silver through the skin. Um, that is a question that I've never asked either. So a lot of unanswered questions today. All right, so let's see. Another question from Robert. For the plant's pest, was the 333, so it's the 333 megahertz ring that we were using for the tensor field generators, um, which is the earth resonance ring, is uh, the harmonic creation field trio. The earth resonance ring is the 333 megahertz ring. Now, it wasn't because of a 333 megahertz frequency that we use that. Um, we use that one because it, one, that's the one that was called to use, but the 333 rings, um, they're the first ones that we came across that were holding the etheric templates really well, the 333. So the 333, um, and again, we, we first started to create these specific tools, um, you know, like the soul set of rings is what we used to call them that go underneath the singing bowls. And so they would hold those etheric um, templates so much easier than, you know, like the 144 megahertz or the 177 or the 188. Um, so that's the, one of the reasons that we use the 333 for the generators is because they were programmable and we could put um, the other templates in there. So, and then the question from Robert is, is that 333 megahertz generated mechanically or electrically? So no, um, actually the 333 megahertz within the tensor ring itself is a specific frequency found within the tensor field. Um, so that the 333 megahertz rings are actually creating a 332.9 megahertz it changes. You take this above a body of water, it actually becomes like 333.6 megahertz or something of that nature. So the actual frequency within the tensor field of this particular ring um, is approximately 333 megahertz. Now, like all of our other rings, um, you know, like the golden fire, there is not a specific frequency within this ring because it is multiple layers of frequencies and they shift and change depending on what is needed. Um, so yeah, working with the um, 333 megahertz tensor field generators in the fields for dispelling beetles, you know, there was more to it than that. We also uh, broadcast radionically into there and then we also put these generators on very specific points within the field. So we use the geomagnetic lines um, and we found the points, well, they found the points and put the generators right on those specific points. And then also um, there were some other things that they added into there too, as well. Um, I believe one of them was uh, a pesticide for that specific beetle that they just placed that within the generator and helped to use that to broadcast that out too as that 
push action. Um, and there's people who are using the harmony generators in, um, in greenhouses. Uh, there, I've been really trying to get Colorado with all the cannabis growers there to start to utilize uh, the tensor field generators in their spaces as well. Um, so let's see you guys. Um, another question here from Elaine. Should I use three pyramid points in a triangulation around my house? In what direction should the apex face? You know, really when we are dealing with this style of grid, um, the electromagnetics play no, play no part. Um, these are not utilizing north, electromagnetic north, things like that. So when you, even when we line up the pyramids, like the, the pyramids from Egypt, um, you know, the, the Giza pyramids, they all connect into the earth grid, the geomagnetic grid, and they are utilizing the geomagnetics of the earth. So that's why you always have to line up a pyramid to a, one of the angles to the magnetic north for the Giza pyramids, the Egyptian pyramids. For the quantum grid points, they are not utilizing the earth's geomagnetic grid line. So it does not matter which way you align a pyramid or which way that point faces when you're creating your grids. Um, so, all right. Um, I think we're about through with questions for the day already. Again, thank you guys for being here. Um, just going to feel in to see if there's any meditations we can do. Um, you know, there's... It, it's such a strange world right now. It, it really is not being able to look forward and, and see things. And, um, you know, I... Still not sure if I'm going to be able to make the 8-8 Lions Gate out in Mount Shasta. Um, I'm supposed to be at another thing in August in um, Oregon for the Dragons um, in Oregon in August. And, man, I just cannot see that far ahead. Um, so the reason I'm saying all that is just about going back to the personal and... Um, in trying to work with that interpersonal stuff. You know, for me, I feel like I've gone through this huge reset and I just have not been able to, to be who I am, but that's part of what this big reset is for me personally is, you know, who am I, what am I doing? Um, you know, I feel like so much of my missions of clearing work, I spend my forte. You know, that's what I've been attuned to is seeing entities and disincarnate beings and, and all the funk. That's what, you know, that's, that's been the work that I've been doing is clearing the funk. And I really feel that we're all ready to step into something different. And, but yet just don't know what it is. And that's kind of the way it is with the tools is I almost feel like the tools might be, um, making some huge shifts in other directions too, instead of doing all the clearing work that we've been working on that has been part of clearing the old paradigm. Um, you know, I almost feel like we are getting ready to step into an entirely new paradigm where we don't have to clear the funk as much. We can focus on creating instead of clearing creation. And maybe that truly is the next step of the tools because that's kind of where the regeneration field and the field of neutrality and all that has been taking us is that it is clearing creations, clearing miscreations, clearing things that no longer serve us because they, they did service at one time. Um, so anyway, it's exciting right now. And with all that said, I was going to do, you know, a meditation, but you know, there's nothing really new. Um, it's just trying to find your own ways. You know, for me, my sacred space of the heart moved here oh, six months ago. I couldn't find my heart space in February. Um, 
it moved. And to me, it's almost like we are operating, operating more from the quantum heart from right at the sternum. And then there's that ball of light right outside of the sternum there. Um, and to me, that's almost like the new sacred space of the heart for myself. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm not going to take you guys on any guided meditations today, but please do what it is that you feel. Um, and it doesn't have to be any crazy meditation stuff and you're going out and fixing the world. To me, it's more right now about being with yourself and being quiet and just being quiet and just being and being in that peace. Um, and just trying to hold that field to me is really where we should be at right now because we can't really look forward because there really is no forward. It's, it's all right here and right now. So holding that field of peace is a phenomenal thing. Um, I'm just going to stop chatting. So I'll see you guys later till next time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the questions. Um, yeah, keep doing the work, holding the space. Keep moving on, you guys. We're we're getting someplace, I know, and it's it's exciting. So, all right, take care you guys.